Sea of Red, it's time for another Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Flames fans. It's go time. Well, we're 80 games into the season, and of course, the Calgary Flames have to keep it interesting. I'm Dan, alongside Matt, to talk about the Flames and uh, the fact they're on the verge of elimination. Matt, how you doing? Oh, good. The Flames are reminding me of that scene in Monty Python where the guy's trying to throw the old man onto the pile of dead bodies, and he's like, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't remember the last time... And, and again, maybe I'm a Flames fan. Maybe it's because I, you know, I'm I'm very much about watching this market. But I can't remember the last time we had a team that was hanging on by such a thread. I know, and it's one of those where, due to scheduling, like Calgary still has a shot legitimately because Winnipeg is playing two very difficult opponents to end their schedule. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be easy. Like we need to win our two games, and they need the the Jets to lose two of theirs in order to secure well, the Let's come spot. back to that math. Let's talk about what got them to that point. Uh, the Flames had three games this past week, and the first one was against the worst team in the NHL, the Chicago Blackhawks. And, of course, the Chicago Blackhawks win the season series. The Flames couldn't beat them at all this year. A 4-3 win to the Blackhawks. At some point, if you're looking at, you know, should the Flames make it? If you can't beat the Blackhawks all year, should they just say Winnipeg? Here you go. Well, and that's basically what this game was, is that, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, when the Flames get eliminated, assuming that, you know, unless the stars align in just the right way, uh, this is going to be the game that you look at and say, yeah, that, that was you being stupid there. and Not just know. this game, I think this whole series. Oh, for sure. And even the Columbus games earlier in the year, uh, like the one that, because the, they played Chicago and Columbus back to back and lost both, and it's like, um, yeah. It, and to be fair, like you know, the Flames basically this whole season have just squandered all their opportunities, and like we saw in the Vancouver game, them losing again in overtime. Um, which you know, even if they had three wins more to make it like eight and fifteen instead of five and eighteen, you know, like they'd be in a comfortably in a playoff spot even with an abysmal play uh overtime record so it is what it is and uh there's nobody really responsible for where they're at other than the team itself and it, it's unfortunate that this has happened but it is what it is well the flames uh, had a chance to rebound after that one taking on Probably the most important game of the week in the Winnipeg Jets. The Calgary Flames playing the team that's above them in the standings and uh, found a way to win that one. Beat the beat the Jets in what I thought was a pretty good outing for the team overall. If we look at the uh, the whole game from start to end, um, but in the end, as Daryl says, you got the win. The win's all that matters, and the Flames get the three to one win in this one. Yeah, and in this game. You know, the, it showed that they actually still cared. Um, in past years, like, this team probably would have lost that game 6-1 to one or something stupid like that. Um, but, you know, everybody gave an excellent performance, including Markstrom. He stood on his head for this one, and the Flames walked away with an absolutely vital two points in regulation. That was really, if there was one game they had to win this week, it was this one, wasn't it? Definitely. And what did you think of the team overall? Like, I thought, like you said, Markstrom stood on his head. Uh, nice to see Zadorov get a goal in this one. I didn't think it was necessarily maybe the best Flames effort we could see, but coming off the Chicago game, it was, I would say, a, a good enough complete effort based on what we've seen all year. Yeah, the team, like, it's second night of a back-to-back, -back and... The team was tired, and yet, in spite of all that, they limited the Jets to only the single goal, and Markstrom stood on his head uh, for most of the game, and Calgary did enough to get the two points. And uh, Walker Dewar with an excellent goal in the third period, and uh, Zadorov with the insurance, and Calgary skated away with the win. And, you know, it was nice to see them step up, until the next game where they kind of fell flat on their face again. I would say this is the story of the Calgary Flames. They just can't be consistent. They go out with a good game and they come back and they're just not consistent 
Uh, the final game, Hockey Night in Canada, it was the Calgary Flames at the Vancouver Canucks. Canucks wearing their old school black skate jerseys, which powered them to a 3-2 to two win. I thought in this one, horrible first by the Flames. They obviously had some chat in the dressing room uh, among themselves saying, hey guys, we need to uh, you know, figure this out uh, coming into the second. I thought they played a really good second and a really good third, but I think it was too little too late. Yeah, like realistically, like if this team had any shot of making the playoffs this year, they needed, you know, the second and third period efforts every period and not starting so many games where you're down one or two nothing. You know, it's a similar refrain. Like even though Markstrom had a really good first period, like it could have easily been four or five nothing for Vancouver with how bad Calgary played in that period. Um, it, it's one of those where it's tough because, you know, like the Flames basically have just shot themselves in the foot so many times this year and coughed up so many points where they didn't need to. And, you know, they're going to likely miss the playoffs just due to, you know, not being prepared for games. And, like, how many times have we been down one or two nothing after the first period and then fought either to make it close or, you know. Well, and the fact the Flames haven't come back after going into the third down until, like, you know, two Last weeks ago. Week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> says a lot about where this team's at. Yeah. And, like, that, you know, they, they've done a very good job of getting games to overtime, even though they've been down 2 nothing or some such after the first period. Uh, but you know that five and eighteen record in the overtime, you know, like you can't really, yeah. You know, even if Calgary was a little bit more balanced on that, you know, the Flames are easily in a playoff spot. But instead, you know, like there was no finish to this team, and it, it's just unfortunate to see this team being good enough where they should be a playoff team and likely going to miss due to them beating themselves more than anything. And, and I think, Matt, tell me if you think this is true, but I think at this point in the season, this week was do or die for the Flames. And the fact that they couldn't do, I, I think it says a lot about who they are and, you know, what they are this year. And, I mean, maybe this sounds bad, but they couldn't do, so maybe they deserve to die. Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's one of those where you had an easy game against Chicago and you lost in regulation. You couldn't even get a point in overtime. You know, like, it, it, it would have been bad if you lost regardless, but, you know, getting zero points was not doable in that game, and yet they walked away. Like, literally this week, they needed four, or five, or six points, and they walked away with three. And while, you know, they're till, still technically alive, and there is a reasonable chance that, things could align the right way for them to actually make the playoffs it you know like you're basically needing uh minnesota and colorado to bail you out and you also beating the two teams that you need to beat and you know like could it happen definitely uh, but you know it's a lot to ask and you know i'd probably say that the odds of the calgary actually making it are probably about 10 to 20 percent and, you know, hopefully, you know, that things change if San Jose manages to beat Winnipeg. Uh, then I'd actually be more confident that the Flames actually do make the playoffs. But, you know, it's just too many it's self-inflicted errors on the, by this team. And, you know, it puts in a lot of questions of uh, what the Flames need to do moving forward to modify this team in order to take those next steps to make sure that you're a playoff team instead of, you know, because, uh, like, at this point, like, if they're going to be missing the playoffs on a regular, then you should just kind of, you know, cut bait and just rebuild at that point. So it's, you know. Well, we'll have the rebuild discussion another time. Mm-hmm. Um, but based on where the Flames are at and sort of what you were talking about, about having, um, you know, 
I guess who needs to beat who? Let's look at the schedule at this point. Uh, right now, the wild card teams in the West are Seattle at 98 points, Winnipeg at 91 points. Calgary's right behind them with 80 games played. The Flames have 37 wins, 27 losses, 16 overtime losses for a total of 90 points. Winnipeg sits at 91 points, and they have one more uh, game to play than we do. They've currently played 79, and Nashville at 88, again, with one more game to play than we do. So our next game is against Nashville. There's uh, That, at this point, becomes a must-win game. Both games, really. Like, you can't. In order for the Flames to make the playoffs and lose a game, uh, you would need literally San Jose, Minnesota, and Colorado to win out against Winnipeg. And, you know, while that might happen, like, you're coming into, like, the 1% chance of that scenario. So Calgary, in order to give themselves even a modicum of a shot, they need to win both and basically pray that Colorado wins the final game of the season. The Flames really need to, yeah, win those two to make it their destiny. Like, you can't be waiting on other teams to try and get you in or not get you in. The Flames are right now one point down from the last wildcard spot, and they got a team chasing them at two points. The fact that we have one less game to play than both those teams, Winnipeg and Nashville, the Flames have to win both. Yeah. The Chicago was the game that they lost that they... You know, they could have, if they had beaten Chicago, then uh, you could have possibly lost either of the games this week and still had a shot. But yeah, you've removed all, you know, your insurance. You, if you want to live, you got to win. And you don't, you're done. Yeah, you've taken away all your, all your wiggle room. So, Matt, with that in mind, two games left. As you said, uh, we've got Nashville coming up on uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, the 10th, Easter Monday, and then the 12th, uh, which is Wednesday, San Jose, two more home games. Are the Flames going to do it, do you think? Um, I think it's a, about a 10 to 20% chance. Uh, How would you say? If San Jose beats um, Winnipeg on Monday and we beat Nashville – I think that there's a slightly better shot because, you know, at that point, um, you know, then Winnipeg would have to win both, assuming that we go on to beat the Sharks. So, you know, it basically, it depends on how Monday goes. If we get a good night on the other town scoreboard and we take care of our homework, uh, I would be more confident that we would actually make it. Um but as of right now, um, like I'm kind of assuming that Winnipeg wins the game against San Jose, and then basically the Flames have no margin for error. They need both Winni- uh, Minnesota and Colorado to beat uh, Winnipeg in regulation, and we need to win our two games. Why don't and- we take a look at these different schedules? So uh, what each team has coming up. I'll start with Calgary, and we just mentioned it. Calgary's playing Nashville, who obviously is a – below us, uh, right below us at 88 points. And then they end off the season taking on San Jose, the third worst team in the West with 60 points right above Anaheim and uh, Chicago. So two very important games there. We know that uh, Winnipeg and Nashville have three games each left. They both played 79. Winnipeg currently 44, 32 and three and Nashville 40, 31 and eight. So it's going to be a uh, tough slog in there. Matt, do you happen to have the schedules up for either of those teams? Uh, no, but uh, I'll get the Jets Let me Jets pull up. them up here. Uh, yeah, the Jets, uh, they play the Sharks on Monday, uh, Tuesday against Minnesota, and Thursday against uh, Colorado. So it's a three-game and four-night affair for those uh, for the Jets. So and with the two difficult and the, teams and the being Predators. on the... Yeah, the Predators also obviously have uh, the Flames Monday. Then they have Minnesota Thursday and Colorado Friday. So, of those two teams, I'd say the Jets probably have the easier schedule. Oh yeah, and you know Calgary, you know they just basically need some help from you know the the Wild and uh, you know Colorado and you know um, Minnesota is going to be fresh heading into the game against Winnipeg and um, similarly. Uh, Colorado's going to be fresh heading into their game against Winnipeg. And 
thankfully, uh, with how the standings are, um, you have Dallas, um, Colorado, and uh, Minnesota all within two points of each other, with the team that finishes first getting likely Seattle, which is a far easier opponent uh, than either of the other teams and then on top of it you have home ice in the series if you're second or third so like those teams even though they only have three and four games left like they're going to be giving it their all because you know it matters in order to get home ice and if not an easier opponent and uh so winnipeg's not going to have an easy road either and you know, it would be different if Winnipeg was playing, like, Arizona and Chicago as their final two games, in which case, you know, we'd both probably be saying, yeah, we're done. Um, but, you know, it's because of those two teams being hungry and in the chase that, you know, Calgary still is alive a bit. Just got to take care of our homework and hope for some luck on the other town scoreboard. And that's the thing that really bugs me, like... We can't, or the Flames can't just go out and do this. They've got to do it and get help from the, out of town. Like, the Flames have dug themselves into a hole that they can't dig themselves out of by themselves. No, and we need some help from some friends. And, you know, if Colorado and Winnipeg, or Minnesota can beat Winnipeg, uh, and Calgary does theirs, then we're good. But um, well, that's it. This whole thing has to line up just right. I mean, we have to beat Nashville. You know, someone else needs to beat Winnipeg. Like, in order to get in, you almost need to have the. It's almost like a game of dominoes. Everything has to fall at just the right time. Yeah, and it it's going to be tough. Uh, but you know, Calgary put themselves in this spot, and you know, if they had played. Uh, the bad teams a little better than they might have actually had a shot, but they shot themselves in the foot so many times. And, you know, uh, frankly, I would be frank a little bit shocked if they actually did pull the rabbit out of their hat, but you know, we'll see. And, and, and I think that's, you know, when we look back at this season, Matt, I think what you're just saying, that's what we're going to remember here. Like the flames set themselves up in this predicament. Like we've talked about, they've, not been able to beat bad teams. They've had some really inconsistent goaltending. Some of the guys they need to step up haven't. Like, it's just been almost a, a death by a thousand cuts this year. Well, you look at Lindholm, right? And he had 42 goals last year. He has 22 this year. Huberto, he had like 119 points last year. He's in the 50s now. Uh, Kadri was a 90 point guy. He's in the 50s or 60s. And, you know, you go through the lineup, and like Manjapani had 35 goals, and he has like 16 this year. And, like, of course, your offense was going to take a hit, but it, it's basically fallen off, fallen off the face of the earth. And then the goaltending was horrendously bad all season, up until the last, like, basically since the trade deadline. And it's. Even then, like, there have been a lot of questionable games, but, you know, some actual good performances from Markstrom. And, you know, it's just tough. And, like, this team needs to, like, if they do end up missing, like, they're going to have to take a hard lens at, like, all the guys that are free agents after next year and, you know, maybe make some hard decisions on, you know, like, if, say, a guy like Lindholm, uh, you know, or Backland or whomever, you know, perhaps getting assets and, you know, adding through free agency. They're, they're going to have to decide what way they want to go. If they think that they are still a, I guess, a playoff team, or if they think that they are a rebuilding team, I think, you know, maybe more than ever, this is going to be, and we'll talk about this more after next week, but I think more than ever, this is the year that they're going to have to figure out what they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it's one of those where they're pretty much like perfectly in the middle of no man's land at the moment because they're not bad enough where you can go and tank for a first overall pick because they have like 10 guys that are too good for that. And yet they don't have that star potential guy on the team either to take them to the next level. And so they're just kind of waffling in the middle of just being a solidly decent team. But, you know, it's starting to remind me of, like, the 2010-13 to 13 Flames where, 
you know, like we were good enough to be in it until the last like week or two of the season and then, you know, go home again and, you know, just be middling enough where can't get a good prospect through the draft or make the playoffs until you just blew everything up. And it's frustrating because like this team has so much potential to be more, but you know, uh, they're just not getting it at all. Yep. Well, we'll we'll come back to some of that after next next week. Um, and the final two games being played, when we can do a full autopsy of the season. Mm-hmm. Matt, you're. I've asked you this for the last couple of weeks. Do you think at this point the Flames do this? If you ask for a straight take, I go no, not at all. I don't see them having the heart to do it, and. You know, um, it, it's one of those where uh, the team just needs to give it their all and hope for the best on the out-of-town scoreboard, but I don't uh, see the other, uh, the Jets losing both games and Calgary winning both games. Uh, it would be nice, but... Um, yeah, just yeah. No, I I totally agree with you. Like nothing, nothing in the way this team has played, especially this past week, where you know they had to do it and they couldn't. Nothing tells me that this is going to happen and the Flames are going to be able to do this. And I just I think that they had their shot this past week and even the week before, but especially this week with you know of three games, two of them being from teams not in the playoffs, they had their chance to make this happen for themselves and the fact they didn't and that, you know, it's not like somebody else just bested us. The team was not ready to go this week and, you know, they, they shot themselves in the foot. And I think that, you know, with that in mind, I don't see why they, why this week would change things, nor do I even really understand why it should change things. If that makes sense. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it's one of those where if Calgary was destined to make the playoffs, they would have not been as bad as they have been and as inconsistent as they've been. You know, like they would have got more serious about actually trying to make the playoffs earlier instead of, oh, shit, we have no time left. And, you know, let's give it our all right at the end. And, you know, it could still happen where we you know next week we're talking about hey the flames actually fluked out and luck their way into a playoff spot and you know we're talking about playing vegas in the first round but but there's nothing that leads me to believe that's going to happen not only because the flames can't do this on their own but they need like you said earlier help from friends it's it to me there's just too many things that all have to line up for this to happen yeah and I don't even think the Flames are going to deliver on their part of that promise. No, honestly, I think they might drop both, uh, you know, just based on all of that. And, yeah, we'll see. It's, yeah, it's frustrating because, you know, this team had everything that they needed to be successful. And, yeah, this team just, can't seem to find the way at all. And well, we're not the only ones that are frustrated, and we will do an autopsy probably along with all of our fans next week. Yeah. So if you're hearing this uh, before um, before the end of the season, we will have a post, post up on or a poll up on Twitter at Fireside Podcast, and we're going to ask you, what do you think? Will the Flames make the playoffs or not? So we'll close that probably before the Sharks game. But if you're listening before that, jump onto Twitter at Fireside Podcast and vote in that poll. We want to know if you think the Flames can do this or not. And um, at this point, I think Matt and I are both in the camp of no. And as a Flames fan, it hurts me to say that, but I, I think it's I, I think right now it's the reality that we're staring at. Is this going to be a season with no playoffs for the Calgary Flames? Yeah, and frankly, I would be shocked if they did. Um, me too. You know, I, I'd be delighted and Hey, great. You know, you got a couple extra games to play. I don't see them necessarily beating Vegas if they get there. 
Um, I think they'd give Vegas a harder time than Winnipeg would. I think if the Flames are in right now, the Flames team we're seeing, they're one and done. Yeah, I agree. Six like I just, I, max and yeah, yeah. I I just don't see any any way that this team makes it out of the first round the way that they played all year. Sure, we've seen yeah, some flashes only, of good things. The only way that I could see them beating Vegas is if uh, Vegas's goaltending falters, which with a young goalie and Jonathan Quick, that's a possibility. But yeah, like that's literally the only scenario where I see it being even a remote possibility that. Um, Calgary could beat Vegas as if their goalies just implode on themselves. Yeah, I guess we will see what happens there. I'm, I don't even think that that's a conversation worth having until the end of next week. Because yeah. I personally don't think it's going to happen. No. Um. By the way, just because we're on the topic of playoffs, who do you see as being the team from the West and the East? In the East, I think Boston. I think this could be Boston's year to go all the way. The West for me is a lot harder to call. Um, I don't feel like Vegas makes it all the way. Part of me thinks it's going to be Edmonton, as painful as that is to I say. I agree. That's, yeah. That's where I was going Like, I, 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 I can't say it. We almost need to to bleep that out when I say Edmonton. Um, but it's like, when I look at the teams in the West, they're the only ones to me that have, even though I don't think they're a complete team, they're the only ones that have looked good all season. Like Colorado struggled. Dallas, I don't think, is a great team. Um, LA is kind of barely in there. Vegas, like you said, has goaltending issues. I think that Edmonton has been consistent enough of being good all season. But... I'm going to say, just because the Flames fan of me can't bring myself to say Edmonton, I'm going to say that we get uh, Dallas and Boston in the finals. Yeah, uh, L.A., Dallas, or Boston. Um, and I don't really... It, the East, it's a little bit easier because, you know, Boston's so good and, like, Carolina's so good that it's pretty much going to be one of those two teams. I don't see anybody else being able to upset those two teams and you know, then it's just a battle Royale and the, the conference finals, assuming that they both get there and you know, whoever gets on top, I think has a definite more of a definite shot at winning the cup than um, any of the West teams, regardless of who it is. Yeah. I think this is, I think this year will be the East year. I don't know exactly what team my heart says Boston, but I think this year the, the cup goes out East. Yeah. Um, do you think that Toronto might actually win in the first round? <laughs> like you said, the East is so, so heavy in good teams. I don't know. I think if, if there's a year they're going to, it's this year, but I don't think that they make it much further than that. Yeah. Well, they'd probably well they'd be definitely playing Boston in the second round, and yeah, that that ain't gonna happen. So, well, coming back to the Flames, we had a fan question last week. It came in after our show last week, so we'll address it this week. This comes from Wayne Pratt on Facebook. Uh, if you don't follow us on Facebook, you can do that at facebook.com slash fireside chat. That's where you can find us there. And Wayne asked, when will Coronado get his his chance. Will they bring Phillips up? It would be nice to see the kids get a shot. Wayne, I'll give you my take on this first. Um, I think that the Flames have an agreement with Coronado that he'll see the ice this year. I don't see it being uh, any time before the San Jose game, which is really only the Nashville game. I don't think you see any other kids. Right now, the Flames are fighting for their lives. Who are you taking out of lineup to put Phillips in? Yeah, and that's exactly the way I think too. Like Coronado wouldn't have signed here if he, his contract was going to get told over to the next season. So he, I'm assuming that the Sharks game that regardless he will play. Um, which you know, if you're playing San Jose, uh, you know, there's no better team really to throw a kid in. Cause, Chicago. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we might have actually won that game, but. No. Let's just say <laughs> if Coronado doesn't play that game, I'm I'm impressed. Like, you know, I I I've always had issues with this idea of let's sign a guy to play a game to burn a year. If he doesn't play that game, I'm impressed because I think it shows something about his dedication to being a flame. 
and that he's willing to roll it over. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think he's going to play there. But you're not going to see Wolf. You're not going to see anybody else. I don't even think Peltier. I think at this point, send Peltier back to the to the American League. Uh, yeah, I could see, like, if the Flames lose the Nashville game or by the time the uh, San Jose game comes a- abound, uh, that uh, I could see Peltier getting in that game. Um, just to, you know, because, like, if the game really doesn't matter at that point, then I'm assuming that the kids play and play more yeah, of a could be right. ro- role. But And I'm just looking here, too. Um, the the Wranglers are on the road, so it'd be a lot harder to recall them. If they were at home, I'd say send them down, get them some time there, and recall them if you want them. Well, they're playing all three games against Abbotsford, so it's not like they're far away either. So No, but you still got to get the guy there, get him on a plane. You're not as ready to play after that. True. So, yeah, I think you'll probably see Coronado. I don't know who would come out. I don't think it really matters at that point. I think it's a fourth-line guy that comes out um, to put Coronado in just to get him a game. But I am I don't expect at this point anyone else. With the Flames yeah. fighting for their lives, um, the... Yeah, and uh, the Wranglers uh, fighting for first overall as well. Like they're and first overall in the AHL gets a buy, so you know they're sort of far, far enough into this now they'd probably relight the buy. Yeah, you know it's one thing to be in the playoffs, but another to get a little bit of rest and get that buy. I think is what they're really going for. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think they're kind of and we've talked about this. You and I have differing opinions on this, but. I think with the Wranglers, you got to be in it to win it. And you got to leave guys down there. If the Flames were clinched, sure. But right now, there's no no way that you see that. No. Because then realistically, you'd bring Wolf up and have him play his first game against the Sharks as well. Like, if, you know, but it, there's no situation really where that makes sense. So. I think if the Flames were where we expected them to be this year, I think that you would have seen... A bunch of guys probably play the Chicago game and the San Jose game. Yeah, because, you know, you don't really care that, you know, like if you're, say, up where Edmonton or uh, Vegas are and you're safely in a playoff spot, you don't really care at that point. So here, have a bunch of kids play and, you know, if you lose, oh, well, who cares? And, you know, but it is what it is and the team's... Likely looking at another year of non not playoffs, and you know it's frustrating. And then you know we have to look forward to things like the draft lottery to hopefully move up from fifteen or sixteen. And yeah, meh. Well, we've got a week of Flames hockey that I'm not sure how to feel about this. I mean, in some ways I'm excited, but at this point, and I hate to say it. I don't really care. Like, I don't think the Flames are going to do it. I'll be watching the games, but I'm not excited for either one of them. I I agree. Like, it's like we've had this too many times where, you know, you, you get the expectations of, hey, maybe you might have a shot, like heading into the Vancouver game. Like, I was, you know, after seeing how they beat Winnipeg, you know, and how much they cared, uh, you know, like I was pumped up, ready for the game, and, you know, like they weren't, uh, you know, and like after the first period, like I turned it off for quite a while and, uh, you know, uh, caught the uh, after the game, uh, just, uh, you know, because like I had other things to do and it's like, you know, and it's frustrating and I'll know. be watching the game for sure. Um, I will be, yeah, I mean, I'll watch the games. I will see what the you know what they have to offer, but I'm just not excited about the games going on this week. When I think about them, I just go, you know, there's nothing here that really excites me, and I go, and I really want to watch. Well, put it this way: the only uh, reason why, like, the, say the final game of the season, uh, the only reason why that would be a must-watch game is if somehow either Winnipeg lost the two games that they were playing, or Calgary won the Nashville game and like they were still alive after the Minnesota game for Winnipeg and you know like okay Calgary if you get your homework done then you just have to hope that Colorado wins the the next day and you know see basically and just watch I'll be curious to see how 
how empty the cell dome is going to be for, especially that San Jose game. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, like uh, it, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if it was half full on the San Jose game. If- so if anyone's looking for tickets or if you haven't seen the flames yet, you can probably get some cheap seats for those games. Yeah. If you want to see Matthew Coronado make his NHL debut, <laughs> there you go. Cheap seats for San Jose. Well, last week, uh, neither of us did well with our predictions. I got the right numbers, but the wrong teams. I thought we'd win Chicago, lose Winnipeg and Vancouver. So I got kind of the the right numbers of, uh, of wins and losses. But you thought we'd win all three. We got two games left to predict. We're 80 games into this thing. We have two games left. Matt, what are you calling for this week? Loss, loss. <laughs> this is the first time all season you've gone loss, loss. Yep realistically i actually do think that they'll win both because nashville is so injury plagued and but vancouver know. had what three defensemen like you know we we can't even win when teams are injury plagued yeah true right i, I mean uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and chicago doesn't look like an nhl team either true damn it <laughs> Right? Like, if there's a team you're going to beat because they're injury played, we should have lit up that Vancouver blue line. Yeah, true enough. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Matt, I'm. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with what the Flames need here. I'm going to say they win Nashville. Sadly, I think they lose San Jose. Yeah. I think they're going to win Nashville. I think they're going to have their hopes high. I think they'll be like, yeah, we can do this. And I think by the time they get to San Jose, their hopes are dashed. Yeah. So for fans looking for those games tomorrow night, uh, Easter Monday, Nashville's a 7.30 start time. I always hate those. Those always screw me up. And Wednesday against San Jose and 8 p.m. start time, both here in Calgary. Yeah. And like we'll know in advance of the San Jose game whether or not the game actually matters. Like uh, uh, Winnipeg plays on Monday and Tuesday against San Jose and uh, Minnesota. And if they win both, uh, we're done regardless. And if Calgary loses the Nashville game and, you know, uh, San Jose gets a point, we're done. So either way, we'll know if the game matters by the time we actually play it on Wednesday and, if it does, then that game might actually be interesting. And then we just have to pray afterwards that Colorado wins and, you know, all of that. But we'll see. I, I but see, it. And, and that's not where I want to be, right? Like, I don't want to be relying on other teams. And that's why my gut still thinks this thing doesn't line up the way it needs to be. No. Like, I'd be pleasantly surprised if they made it. But... Yeah, it it would be a surprise. Well, Matt, I guess uh, you and I will chat again next week. That'll be probably our last show for a little while, and we will talk about whatever happens this week. Who knows what it's going to be, but uh, win, lose, or draw, you and I will be here as always to talk Flames hockey. Yeah, and if the Flames uh, manage to miss the playoffs, then uh, you know we'll have the draft lottery to hopefully move up to like sixth or fifth or something like that. Um, if not, um, then either way, uh, Dan and I will be, uh, profiling the draft, um, like as the next major thing, if the flames miss the playoffs, um, and profiling all the guys that are available in the zone for when the flames pick and, you know, breaking all that down. Before we let everybody go, I mentioned this last week and I want to mention it again. If anyone's going to be attending Calgary Expo this year, uh, and if you're going to plan to be there on Saturday, April 29th, come by the podcast stage at 1.15 to 2 p.m. I'll be on the podcast stage talking about the journey Matt and I have taken and giving some tips on how you can start your own podcast. If you're interested in getting into podcasting, uh, I'd love to see you. Come by, say hi, stay for my session, and I'm going to have some Fireside Chat swag as well. So come to me before or afterwards, let me know you're a listener, and I will have a sticker or maybe some other things for you. And we, we'd love to meet our listeners. We always love to meet people when we're out and about, and this is a really cool chance to meet our listeners. So come on by. We'd love to see you. Yep, and it's actually been 10 years now that we've been doing this, so if anybody knows how to do a podcast, it's not us. (laughs) 
Don't tell them that, Matt. I want people to come to my my <laughs> session. All right, t- let's get out of here, Matt. As always, go Flames, go. Fireside Chat is hosted by Dan Stevenson, co-hosted by Matt DeBorg. This episode produced and edited by Peter Marino. Fireside Chat is licensed under Creative Commons license. For full license details, visit firesidechat.ca.